I bid you good day. At our last coming together, we explored the subject of living and then finding oneself in the time or the condition of transition called dying, <laughs> only to find that you are living again and in a different way. This will be a continuation of that discussion so that you will know more and more about this subject so that perhaps you will fear it less and that even as you wonder about it, you will imagine yourself being and doing many different things beyond those that you imagine now. So to continue, to restate the obvious, there is no such thing as death. There are many and various forms of life and living here and there and everywhere. Everything is a form of life. Everything lives. Anything that appears to be in a condition of death is but a transition into another or next form of life. Sometimes what you observe as what life has left over is for those that live in that condition. And the next aspect that is already growing has already moved on to the next dimension, to the next experience. This time we turn toward life between lives so that you will know much more of what takes place. Even when you have completed a time upon the earth, in some ways you continue to live, at least with the earth, if it is not on the earth. So we will begin at the birth or the rebirth of the soul's essence into itself, when you, your essence, your truth, your beingness, leaves the body for the last time, just after the last human breath has been drawn. At that moment, the first spirit's breath is drawn on the next plane of existence, of experience. Now, not all last breaths nor first breaths are the same. And so not all go to or come from the same place or the same plane. So a bit of explanation is necessary here. The more difficult the death, the more period of transition that may be necessary. On the other hand, the more prolonged the illness, if there was one with the expectation of death, the sooner that transition period will take place, for the soul will have had much in various times to prepare the being for the next phase. The younger the being that transitions at times, also the quicker the transition period to the next plane of experience. The more attached one is to the experience of that particular life, the more attached there has been to the personality, the more difficult the transition period may be. All of these, then, are their own unique cases, and this is completely understood by that or those that await or receive the one that is transitioning. There is no expectation of what is coming or what it would look like or feel like or how fast someone should get over it. Get over your human life. No, not like that. Hurry up and notice that you are here and not there. No, not like that. For the most part, it is a gentle experience and when it is not a gentle experience, it is because the one that transitions struggles and fights 
like one that struggles and fights against the tide, against the flow of the river. You may struggle as long as you wish, as long as the body allows you to, as long as the breath will allow it, as long as the soul determines it. The struggle can go on and on. And some of the ideas that you have of hell are no more than the struggle of the being, not wishing to release the human self, not wishing to separate itself from the body that it had become attached to, from a purpose filled or unfulfilled as the case may be. Every encouragement is made by those who assist to make the transition a smooth one, a simple one, truly no more than falling asleep in one plane or bed and waking up in the next, refreshed and feeling grand and ready to take on another view of life itself. That is always the goal, that is always the ideal, but again, there is no expectation of when or how long this will take place. And so as soon as that last breath and that first breath is drawn, already there is change afoot. Already there is something or someone new to see. There is a day to be greeted. Now, once you transition beyond the physical experience, the day and night is not exactly the same. But here I will tell you that the first few days or weeks or months of experience for each one is unique and different, as we have said. So those that are very, very accustomed to light and dark, day and night, will have that experience. Those who are very accustomed, for instance, to having a firm body, a body that they recognize as their own, will have the experience or the manifestation of the body. Those who awaken and immediately feel or believe that they must feed that body in order to have health, they will have the experience of eating, and there is that which can be eaten as well. It will taste very much like the physical human food that you have had all of your lives. But the digestion process is not quite the same. It is fulfilling, but it is not filling. You will not have the feeling of a full stomach but you will have the experience of eating and the satisfaction that goes along with that. There is no need for the elimination process, for there are not physical organs to process and separate all that the body's nourishment requires from that which would later become waste. You awaken into a body, but one that is more, less, dense, than the one that you have had. Thus, the density of the body automatically begins to reconfigure how you hold yourself, how you know yourself to be, the very boundaries of where you begin and you end. For the most part, this is very comfortable, because remember that the third dimension upon the earth is a very dense one, Rocks, for instance, boulders are very heavy upon the third dimension. And on the higher, lighter dimensions, they are not. That is why they can be levitated. And so your bodies would feel also very much as if they are levitating just slightly above the ground. Not truly floating, although this is how some of the artists and descriptions have configured this for you you will feel as if you are walking just above the ground a little bit, as if your feet do not truly need to touch the ground to feel that they are walking or connected to the plane that they are on. Likewise, many of your depictions have appeared to have heaven appear to take place upon the clouds, and I tell you here that these depictions that you have become accustomed to are simply to exemplify that as well, that you are less dense, 
that there is not a, a need to touch the solid ground in order to feel oneself be their fullness. As you find yourself there in this next plane of experience, you will sometimes be greeted by one that knows you or has known you very well in the physical life that you have just left behind or perhaps even another physical life. And in that moment that you greet this one, it will all seem very comfortable, very ordinary as a matter of fact, as if you expected them, as if you were on airport landing and knowing exactly who would be greeting you once you land. It will feel very much like that, even if it has been eons of time since the last time you saw that being, it will still seem to you just right, perhaps just out of the ordinary but not odd. For some reason it is not odd. Because you see, now there is a greater reality or your soul that is orchestrating for you, bringing together all of the different aspects of self, those that you recognize and those that you remember, those that you trust, making certain that as much as possible you are as comfortable as can be and that as assisted as can be. And so you are greeted by all those that you know and trust, sometimes one, so that you will not be overwhelmed depending upon the experience, sometimes many. If you had always imagined that you would have a party to welcome you home, then that is what and who will welcome you home. Now, sometimes... There is also the essence of those whom you have left behind in your earth life, even though they continue to live. This can be a little confusing in the beginning, because as you look upon them, you know something is different. You will have a feeling that something or someone has transitioned or changed, but when you gaze upon them, you will begin to wonder, am I different or are they different? Did they transition and I stayed? Did they go? Did I go? And so sometimes these loved ones remain behind a little bit, behind of the introduction until you begin to feel more comfortable with what is taking place. But if at all possible, they would like to be included as well and you would like to have them. And in some cases, there is a very subtle knowing look about them that will say to you, oh, it is only a part of their experience. This is not their full essence. They are not completely here. I am here and they have sent an emissary of themselves to greet me. And you will understand this and it will please you because it will allow you those moments to know that all is well and that and those that you have left behind bereft as they may be on the physical plane, on this plane in which they are greeting you, they are quite well. They are happy to share the experience with you. In some cases, they may even say to you, when is their expected time of arrival or transition? You will have moments to say when you will see each other again and how you will relate to each other in the meantime. Again, I tell you, that these instances that we describe are unique and to the moment they are not exact and they depend upon the awareness, the consciousness, how much of you or they is present, how many experiences such as these have been completed in full consciousness, what plane you arrive on and like that. A plane is a little bit like a dimension. It is an understanding. It is a place that is defined by certain parameters, by certain rules. So the third dimensional plane has a certain gravity associated with it. You understand what things weigh, how you use those things, how you relate to them, what items are used for building, for instance. All of this is part of the reality associated with that plane of existence or experience. So it is the same when you transition. There are a variety of planes of experience. And this has been described to you at other times 
and it has been described, even biblically to you, called the many mansions of experience. And of course there were long ago very beautiful and complete descriptions of these mansions, and unfortunately these are no longer available in the text form, so you cannot relate to them how they were put forth to you. Even so, the language that was used then would serve you even less today and would perhaps lead to even greater understandings or misunderstandings than you have now. So perhaps it is best that they are not translatable to you now. There will be another time for these again. And so on this plane of experience, the very first landing plane and the very first place that you find yourself it will feel a little bit like you must gather together your land legs, as if you have been on the sea a long time. You will feel a little bit wobbly. You will find yourself in a less dense experience. And so you will not know exactly whether to stand or sit. And if you stand, because you will not have physical, skeletal bones to stand you up and to uphold your stature, you will feel a little bit liquid-like a little bit dizzying for the first few moments until you come to know a less dense body. Now, to be clear, you will have a body, but it is less dense and less defined than the one that you have now. It will be distinguishable from all others. It will have a form, a definition, boundaries, and you will have the experience of movement. You will have the experience, at least in the beginning, of arms and legs and how to have a certain mobility. But after a time, you will also discover that that body that you have can be reshaped. It can be reorganized. That it is not as dense nor as structured as your physical body. And so you will see that you can begin to create it redefine it in a different way. If you had a certain walk, a certain cadence to your walk upon the physical, when you first find yourself in your lighter body, you will have the same cadence, the same walk. After time, you will see that you no longer need to do so. For instance, if you had a certain limp associated with your physical body, in the beginning, you would go right back to that until after a time, perhaps by your own recognition, for it is rare that another would point it out to you, you would simply know, oh look, I don't have to do that anymore, because I do feel perfectly fine. The moment that you begin to recognize that you are perfectly fine, that is when you will begin to take a more youthful appearance. In the beginning, however it is that you have crossed over, that is the appearance that you will have because it is the last memory of yourself that you have had. And so it is the first one that you will awaken with and into. It is the first one that you will then project to others. So regardless of what the age is, the chronological age that you had when you transitioned, that is what you will first find yourself in. And then you will note that many of those that you recognize have begun to already remake themselves. They will appear to you as you have known them for the time that you require them to. And once you have become accustomed to being near them, then they will begin to show themselves to you more and more as they feel most comfortable by their choice. That is how you will begin to see them. And so you will also take, by example, the same ability and begin to do the same yourself. Sometimes you will ask questions about this. How it is done? Or does it simply happen? Is it automatic? Or must you go somewhere, do something, or request it? And of course you will have the assistance of those who, having had many similar experiences like this, will also do the same and share those experiences with you. Again, once you become accustomed to your sea legs and the new form that you have in the lighter body, you will eat if you wish to eat. You will recognize day and night and perhaps even some of the similar landscapes that you have become accustomed to, although they will all be slightly lighter. 
here, a little bit as if you see something that is painted in watercolor instead of another media that is more dense. Perhaps that is a good example to use for you. In the beginning, you will think that if you wish to communicate with someone, that you must speak. And so you will attempt to speak, to speak the language that you have most known. When that language does not quite work because you do not have the jaw and the teeth and the way to move the tongue in your mouth to make such sounds, you will attempt to use another language. And then, very soon after that, it is discovered that with your thoughts, you can also move thought, communicate with thought. It is a little bit like what you imagine telepathy to be like upon the third dimension, but not exactly. It is moving thought. It is the projection of thought in order to communicate. And you will see that the thought manifests itself. And so you are able to communicate your thoughts to others and even an entire condition of something, something that you read. If you had read a book recently, you could communicate all of the thought, all of the feeling that you had, the entire experience of having read the book, all of the impact that it had upon you. You can project that thought to another without necessarily telling them when you read it, how many pages it had, and all of the different thoughts that you had while you were reading it. More like a packet of information. Perhaps that will do. And so you become accustomed to that form of communication as well. Again, upon first finding yourself transitioned, it will feel to you, for the most part, that you will require more rest. Many times those that do transition have been ill for some time and so already they have been confined to rest or bed rest. And so finding themselves on the next plane, that is the first thought. After they become initially excited or discovery where they are, they will need to rest after that initial discovery. And so those that know you or those that greet you recognize, know this and will make accommodations for this and there will be a place that feels a little bit as if it is yours something recognizable something that resembles a very comfortable bed in every way and there you will rest if that is what you wish to do sometimes newly ones who have just crossed over rest for longer than they think that they have rest it may seem to you that you have rested for, well, several hours, perhaps a day, even two days, and you will not have recognized that several months have gone by in human time. It would surprise you. And yet, again, all of the sensations of time that passes by are unique and different, and so all is honored in this. This is not the majority of the examples it is simply one of the examples. There are those who cannot wait to begin to see and do and discover, as one that lands in a foreign and exotic place and cannot wait to change their clothes and begin to explore all that there is to see and do, particularly because they do find themselves to be in a less dense form. So here you have another example. Now, you have also heard that as many find their way transitioning, there is a time of review of lifetimes. In certain religious circles, this is called the time of judgment. Well, let us change the terminology of that. Let us call it the joy of observation, for that is more accurate. The being, the now lighter, fully transitioned being, first identifies with the past. Why? Just as you know now, you already are more comfortable with the past. There are past patterns. There are past experiences that you have had. The past is associated with a routine. Here there is no routine, particularly not yet. And so very much at the beginning, there is the experience of the past, and there begins the review. 
because the mind is no longer linear now. There is no need to review year by year or from front to back, back to front, from this age to the other. It does seem to be organized in chapters. So you may, for instance, explore the chapter of all of the times that you knew joy in this life and all of your experiences would organize themselves in that way for you to observe them one by one or all at once. You may say, now I wish to observe all of the times in which I was in true service to another and service to the earth and all of your experiences and memories would organize themselves in that way. You may choose, for instance, to say, I wish to know the times that I have known love or true love or this kind of love or that kind of love. Again, your experiences would reorganize themselves to your liking. Now, what in the physical plane appears to you as a judgment does not exist. Judgment exists on the third dimensional physical plane of experience where comparing exists. This is better than that. That is worse than this. I got it right. I got it wrong. And so judgment comes from the third dimension. It is an approximation of observation on the non-physical planes. And so this form of observing your experiences, it does not come with the better than, worse than. It does array itself by density. This I will tell you. And so the lighter expressions that you have known, you would find more joy in those, more ease in them. The times where you were not fully conscious in the decisions that you made or the words that you offered others or the experiences that you chose for yourself, these would be at the bottom of your choices. And so you would also be able to see the relative progression that you made regarding that chapter or that subject. You would simply observe this. That does not mean to say that you would not say to yourself, some part of you might say, well, if I was to do that again, I believe I would do so differently. If I was to choose that same subject matter, I believe I would approach it differently. But you see, that is not the same as to berate yourself for what you could have done or should have done, did or didn't do. And another note on that that can be added, it is not a final note. When you find such moments in which you say to yourself, well, I believe I would have done that differently, there will be ways for you to do that differently. Now, certainly you could not go back and rearrange an entire life, but you can, in fact, rearrange the density of an experience. You can, in fact, insert yourself with some practice and the assistance of others, for there are experts in this as well, that can assist you in taking you to a certain experience, a certain moment in time, and inserting something there, inserting a measure of yourself there, like a formula, something very soft, something very sweet that changes the moment itself, and carefully, fragrantly begins to remake, to make or unmake, as the case may be, a certain experience, a certain truth to make it more true, or a certain dissatisfaction to release or relieve that. Now, to those that are on the physical plane, for them, they may experience an epiphany in that moment that somehow releases them from thoughts or obligations or densities associated with that moment. And it can be something that is in that life or lifetimes ago. However, most of the time, it is relative to this life. And so it would seem to those that are yet living on the earth that they have made a great deal of progress in this area. Oh, look, I have finally let go of that. Oh, look, that troublesome thought that I have had for so long, it has finally been healed. Or this or that that I am doing must be working. And not to say that it is not, but you see, there is so much at work in a reality. Life is so much more beautiful, expansive and permissive than you imagine. Healing takes place, 
at all times and in all ways. This I do wish for you to record and remember, because you need not wait, of course, until you have transitioned in order to say, I'll go back to it then and forgive or forget or change. When one understands spaces and densities and planes of expression, it is only just a little bit more to remake time so that the calendar is literally like a sewing stitch, is something that can be unmade and then remade. You can open the smallest stitch in time in order to insert a thought that was not there, a word that had not been said, and there, stitch it back up nicely, seamlessly, so that you will not need to revisit such moments later. Again, in the observation of all of these moments there is no judgment sometimes you will find that one of your guides a close friend is near you when you observe the relative parts of your life just as there are some events and moments in the physical that are very emotional this would be one that is so particularly because remember that you have just now very recently set aside the life, the lifetime, the body. And so there is still a little bit of confusion regarding how to use this. This moment of observation is a little bit like a tool. And it helps to have someone nearby that knows how to operate the tool perhaps better than you do. Your soul then as you observe moments by moments or chapters or how you choose to organize these, with each completed moment, your soul literally drinks or observes all of the perfections associated with these, all of the preferences associated with these. For instance, as we said moments ago, if your thought while you are in observation is, The next time I choose to have an experience like this, I believe I would go about it differently. Your soul records that for you. You have just made a wish. You have made a desire. And so your soul, to your benefit, for your credit, records that. If, for instance, you say, the next time I come across that being or that soul, I wish to make amends for that. Your soul records that. If there was even a beautiful painting that your memories bring forward and you will say, ah, that painting has always brought me the most fondest experiences. Some day I wish to see that hanging in my study again. Your soul will record that. And if it is possible, if it is still an existence or experience, you may find that it is added to your collection again in another life. So you see... There are beautiful experiences associated with these observations and very little to do with judging yourself or others. Associated with this time of observation, you will also be able to see all of those moments that others had intended to be different, not just yours. And so you may perhaps replay words in which another's argument is heard by you again. But now that you are not humanly attached to the emotion or that experience, you may hear those same words, and instead of hearing the anger that was in that voice, instead you will hear the fear. Perhaps you will hear all of the other attitudes or sorrows that came before those words crossed over to you. And so here you will then say to your soul, Oh, what a pity I could not see that in that moment or recognize it as I do now. Let's allow that person to be free from those words or let us tell them even now that I finally understand exactly what they wish to convey to me in that moment. And so just by your recognition of that, just in that moment of realization, your soul can indeed attend to just that. And on the physical plane or any other place where that moment still lives, that moment will be 
healed. For lack of another word, the moment will receive anything that it had been lacking. The moment will complete itself. And so if any density remained in that moment, it would resolve itself. It would complete itself. And perhaps it would disappear from any other thoughts. You will perhaps never think that thought again because now it is complete. All of this is part of the observation. Some beings spend a great deal of time in this observation time. It is almost as if they cannot get enough of it. And here there is nothing and no one, there is no force that will come and say, that is enough now, you know. You have been at this for a very long time. Haven't you seen enough? Haven't you experienced enough? No. There is no such time associated with this. For some, it all seems to take place in one blink. And for others, it can seem as if they are at it for a few years in human time, consumed by it, consumed by every thought, consumed by every way to organize and view life. There is no right or wrong according to this. For instance, there are some that believe if they do take the time and view and view and view, then in their next life, they will never need to think that or view that, or they will have so completely understood that time and that life that they will be completely free, karmically free, you might say. And who is to fault them for that? But at the same time, there are others that would say, after so long, after you have seen it and felt it and digested it and experienced it, cleansed it and healed it and more and more, how long can you dwell in it? And so there are those that would say that it is a healing process and others that would say it is the most hell that they have known. Again, one man's heaven is another's hell and vice versa. And again, no right and wrong in this Eventually, this time period also passes. It is almost as if you wake up one day and say, It is done. It is over. I have seen and felt everything. And it will feel just like that, as if the past had somehow disappeared. Not because you cannot think of it or imagine it, simply it is just not there as it relates to you. The you that you are now is the you that is present in that moment. And it will seem as if there is no more you to explore. No more yesterdays, no more incomplete yesterdays, no more incomplete thoughts, no more inconsistent thoughts. One day you will wake up and you will no longer think, I wonder what is happening on earth. I wonder what my wife or husband or son or daughter or business partner is doing today. That thought will simply not arise. There will be less association with the earth plane, less association with all that is earthly or any necessity to grasp or cope or understand or view anything to do with the earth. And then, then, that is when the last lifetime has finally completed itself. That is when it is complete. So, you see, a lifetime is not necessarily over just because you discard a physical body, just because that physical body could not go on living or associated with that lifetime. The lifetime is over and complete when you and your soul, when every thought, when every experience, when every observation, and yes, every former judgment, emotion, idea of that life, has completed itself, that is when the lifetime is over. Now, for many upon the earth, they will continue to feel the presence of those that understood you in that life until such moment as the lifetime is complete for you. Then, then, they will no longer feel it. 
then they will have only a memory. Then they will perhaps go and change their lives a great deal. Then they will perhaps not revisit in their thoughts or their memories or their longings as much as they once did. So you see, in essence, the sooner you complete this experience, once you have crossed over, the sooner those that are in physical also can then continue to experience their lives in a new and different way. It is different again for each and individual one. No right, no wrong, we continue to say this, for the extremes of polarity do not exist once you have crossed over. Once you have found yourself in that new state of aliveness, that is when you and your soul truly come together again. Until now, we have been calling you a being, a beingness, and we have been saying how you relate to your soul. Because during this transition time, you do not quite recognize that you are one with your soul. It seems separate to you. Somehow very familiar, somehow very parental, somehow it is associated with guidance, something very heavenly, very lovingly, very indispensable to you. But in the beginning you would not say that and I are one. It would seem separate to you. Once the lifetime, the previous lifetime, has fully and completely been let go, that is when you feel the kinship, the oneness, the inseparability of your soul. And so there is a moment in which you rejoin your soul. This is a very simple moment. It is a very easy moment, not at all difficult or distracting as the death process may have been. It is again a transition, it is a merging, a simple, comfortable, natural one. And then in this moment, you as soul, not you and your soul, but you as soul, merge into that oneness in which your form becomes then even less dense, even lighter form, still form. And by then, of course, there will not be the necessity to either eat or sleep, or define yourself in certain ways. You will, however, still feel very much like you. You will have an identity, but you will see that there is no reason to protect that identity. You would not look at another and hide any part of yourself, or show a certain version of yourself that you show this one, but you show someone else a certain version like you would today perhaps show your business associates one version of you, but your private family moments would be different. Once you have merged with your soul, it is all very obvious anyway. And so there is nowhere to go and nowhere to hide. Every moment then is known by others, but they are all seen as very perfect, just as they are. You see, that is one of the reasons why you hide or obscure certain aspects of you now. You do not think kindly upon them. You are not certain upon them. You do not wish others to see your frailties and your fears and your shortcomings. Of course, for the most part, they know them or imagine them anyway because they have their own. But it is the protocol of the third dimension, and that, perhaps, is a discussion for another day. And so you, as so, now begin to embark on the next moment or the next chapter of your experience. Now that you have let go of all of the experiences associated with this prior life, you begin to take on and to remember all of your other lives as well. All of your other experiences, not only all of your physical lives, but all of your next lives and all of your previous and in-between lives as well. It is just a little bit confusing in the beginning, 
but then very quickly begins to order and reorder itself. Again, this is not a linear order, so it is not like you would say, well, that was in the 1200s in Europe, and next it was in the 1300s in the Nordic, and there I was in the 1400s in the Southern Americas and like that. It is a different organization, a soul's organization. Know that a library can be organized in many different ways. It is organized more by terms of resources, experiences, by desires fulfilled or unfulfilled. It is not this is karmic and that is not, or this is spiritual or that is not, plain and mundane or like that. But all of these experiences can be called forward. And the process would be similar to that of the observation that we spoke of earlier ago. And so you as soul begin to recognize the creativity that is the universe. The true creativity that is available everywhere that you are, everywhere that you look and everything that you can imagine. And so now your imagination or your soul's creativity is remerged, reimagined, and all manner of possibilities become part of what is available to you. Remember that until this happened, you were in the mode of observation or review or self-discovery or self-awareness or anywhere that you placed yourself. But your identity was more with your past body, with your past life, and so it would have done no good for you to see all that is possible that you can do when you are still very attached to the last time frame because you would have wanted to take all those possibilities and drag them off, make them dense in your last lifetime. And that would have been impossible. And so you would have found yourself in futile efforts. And so until such review is complete, the soul resists the very strong desire to fully merge with you as being and allows the process to unfold carefully and naturally, knowing that you will reap all of the rewards in this in due experience, in due time, as it were. Now then, creativity is reborn, and now is when you truly begin to take note of where you are. Until now, a part of you believes that you are somehow connected to the earth plane, and well, you were. Some part of you still connected to the astral plane. And so there, all of your experiences associated with this life had to be panned out or played out because you would not wish to take them into the lighter energies. Once your memories have been refined, all that is left of them is lightness, akash the lightest form of memory, the lightest form of experience. And your soul knows exactly what to do with these. It then takes the highest forms of memories or light and all of the preferences and all that you have noted during that time and stores it for you for a moment in the future in which it will be most appropriate. It is not most appropriate necessarily for your next life. It can be spread over many lives or lifetimes. Or you may wish to have such experiences of compassion, for instance, in between lives. It is not that you must store up all of these desires and say, next time I will get to all of this. Discovery, bit by bit, you will see that you can have many of these experiences without having to have a human life or the dense physical body experience in order to complete questions that may still exist. And so together then with your aspects, your soul aspects, for now you have many different ways to see yourself and experience yourself, you begin to explore the idea of creativity. You begin to explore what here and now means 
and what you wish to both be and do. Because as so, you recognize that you are less limited. The moment itself is limited, but you, without the need to cling to a body or the body's breath or the beat of the heart, have many choices now. Now, as a humorous aside, I will tell you that the very first thing that many, many say is, well, now I want to meet God. Now that I am done with this or that, or have completed my lessons or my experiences, surely I am ready to dress rightly and meet or see, look upon the face of God. And of course, now that is when the soul almost literally turns itself inside out and reveals itself as God. So it is not that the soul and God are one, but if the soul's aspect and you can merge and become one, then that which is goodness and godness and soul also know. And so the soul literally turns itself inside out, revealing its highest, deepest light, and you as soul also become one with God or one with the experience of God. And this is unique to each one. Each one approaches this in a different way. Some have memories of this or this experience and having had this experience before. Others feel it as if for the first time. For some it is a flash of brilliance. A moment's explosion, a big bang. For others it is a deep well, the stillness where nothing moves, for everything is perfection itself. For some it is the observation of something that is beautiful and so perfect as nothing else like it exists. And some see a mirror's reflection of themselves that simply says, as you have heard, be still and know that you are God. This experience then also lasts as it does. There are those, for instance, who have lived through many, many, many hells and finally find themselves at this threshold. Some call this the gates, the gates of heaven, the pearled, gilded gates. These are all simply expressions of self recognizing itself as God. Of course, it is difficult for you to imagine this for yourself here and now in physical expression because so many parts of you do not think that they are God or godly. And remember, even upon transition, see all the different phases that have taken place before the being merged with soul and recognized itself as soul. Now, what happens if you do not say, ask of soul? I wish to look upon the face of God, or I wish to meet God, or what it will be. You will still have that experience, but it will come about in a different way. It will come about as a simple reflection of self. Because remember, once you have crossed over, there are not human religions to delineate where each one goes. There are not many different types of buildings where you will say, I live in this kind of architecture or the other. There is an architecture of light. There is a hierarchy of light that you recognize and participate in. But they do not have the human delineations of I belong to this religion or that is not my thought. They begin to crisscross the obvious of each one the more real that each one is, the more real it is beyond life on earth as well. But the human dogma associated with these, these begins to fall away and very quickly. Dogma or human thoughts or judgments, as we have said earlier, opinions, these are very dense and so they do not last long upon transition, not long. 
and those that do last a bit too long, well, here I must tell you that the soul must store these as well, so that you will be able to explore them in another life. If they cannot be dissolved, if they have truly crystallized, made themselves somehow solid in a non-solid environment in this lighter plane of existence, if they still continue to remain dense even after they have been observed, those little crystalline deposits, mineral deposits, the soul must store these as well. And more than likely in the next life, these will be examined because the soul will not wish to sit on them, as it were, longer than necessary. It would not wish those deposits to become any more dense than they already are. So the soul will sift through those for a little bit as well. You must forgive that I will continually say to you that we will explore this or that at another time, and yet there are many different topics to do so. And these crystalline deposits that are carried over, that in itself is a topic you know, for you live now in a time of many sanctions. This is sanctioned and that is not. This is allowed and that is not. You live in a time of very strong beliefs that are steeped in this and that, in traditions and religions and such. And so those that end their life or that of others because of these very strong beliefs, well, these are the kind that at times take a bit longer than one lifetime to release, or they are the times that observed upon and observed and re-experienced is still not quite enough. And so these are the kind that the soul will store. And in the next life, well, perhaps it is appropriate to call these then karmic moments, if not lifetimes, for indeed they will come about again. We will continue this discussion again in our next segment, for I find that it is of interest to me and I find that it is being well received by you as well. And so in our next segment we will continue to explore all of the different ideas and creativities and options that are available to the soul, as so you, as so, what you will do then in between lives, what is the next step once you and so, as so, continue along your journey. Yes, we will gather again soon. I bid you good day. <laughs> 